Hello, everyone. I'm Lynn Webster. Um, I think I can give you a couple of titles. Uh, probably uh, best is the president of the American Academy of Pain Medicine. Um, been a clinician, anesthesiologist in the state of Utah for 30 years before I retired from my practice. And now I'm a uh, clinical researcher, uh, full-time clinical researcher, mostly in uh, uh, investigating safer, more effective uh, analgesics for the treatment of pain. I'm also uh, certified uh, in addiction medicine. Um, I, I think that uh, chronic pain is in many ways viewed as palliative care. That is the treatment of chronic pain. Um, and so I, th I really do see this uh, intersection a great deal. Uh, and I have in, um, I have in my career. Uh, but it, it is, I think, a misnomer not to think that chronic pain isn't uh, terminal and malignant, as Myra, you just said. I, often it's seen um, patients who uh, threaten to commit suicide if they couldn't get some relief. And so for many people that experience chronic pain, it's as malignant as a cancer. And today, with the cures that we see with many of the cancers, I, 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 I would uh, set it up against uh, many of the people that, that is, uh, it, the challenges, the challenges of treating people to restore a quality of life and even an extent of life um, are as great for many people with uh, severe chronic pain as with many of the cancers. So it brings me to, though, the, the issue I want to bring up because I think we have decision makers here and that in the next year or so there are some decisions that could have a major impact on the malignancy of chronic pain and the outcome of uh, chronic pain. And, and that's the treatment. Um, you know, uh, Jim had begun to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, opioid issue, and it is indeed a serious problem. I've often talked and lectured about uh, safe, safe opioid prescribing or a safer way to prescribe opioid. Most of my lectures have always been about reducing harm um, and reducing the death deaths associated with opioids because indeed they are a particular problem. Um, but what, what I've realized is that as Jim pointed out, a third of our deaths are from methadone. Uh, unintentional overdose deaths are associated, I don't want to say due to, they're associated with it um, and only represent about two to two to three percent of all of the medication. Now here's, here's where um, I think an important point uh, needs to be made, or I hope that you, uh, those who are decision makers understand, with the, ex with the expansion of uh, Medicaid, we're going to have far more people having access to some treatment, and I think you all probably know that methadone is an inexpensive medication and it's a default medication. Opioids are a default uh, treatment for chronic pain because our healthcare system is structured so that we don't have access to many of the modalities of treatment that we, uh, that many of our colleagues in, in uh, other places in the world, Australia in, uh, in particular, uh, have available for their uh, patients. And so in this country, particularly for the Medicare and Medicaid population, methadone is the primal <laughs> drug, prime therapy. Now the problem with that is, is that it's very risky to prescribe, and this can be illustrated by what occurred in the state of Washington uh, a couple of years ago and reported in the Seattle Times for which they received the Pulitzer Prize. Eight percent of that uh, state adult population um, are Medicaid, but they represented 48 percent of all of the unintentional overdose deaths. This all occurred after the policy of placing methadone as a preferred opioid. So, um, our CMS and our Medicaid policies at the national as well as the state level have the ability to take methadone off the preferred list and make it something that you have to go through some kind of an authorization process and the purpose of that would be to ensure that anybody who is prescribing it has the knowledge to prescribe it. It's not meant to not have it available. It's a very good analgesic. It should be used, but no one should use it who don't know how to prescribe it safely. And this is going to be a position statement from the American Academy of Pain Medicine. We need to have adequate knowledge in order to safely prescribe it and not leave it on as a preferred drug. There are uh, 34 states in the country that have um, 
methadone on their preferred drug list. 34. 14, uh, don't. Two, only two, Nevada and West Virginia, have indicated that um, it is not preferred. The other 12 are just silent. So it's easy to access the least expensive drug, which is, of course, a very important um, uh, factor. I mean, we, we, cost is a reality. Uh, we need to uh, have access to the less expensive, particularly if they're effective, but we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility also to ensure that our patients are being treated with medications by people who are adequately trained. And that's a simple thing to do, to ask that every prescriber of methadone has a minimum level of knowledge and certification before it's authorized. And that could go through an authorization process. Thank you.